the only chance I've got of staying alive is to stay dead. Find out who wants to kill me. And why. Slip, jump for the hopper and hang on. When you finish playing bloody acrobats, I want to see you. Take your time. A bridge foundation's about the best place for bodies there is. Come on. Elsie, try fitting a few safety ropes. Then this job wouldn't be a circus act. Stick the light room. What do you know about safety rigs? What do you want? Take a look, Crow, or wherever your name is. So you're laid off. The two fellas there after I want you for murder, and they sound a lot like you. Why not turn us in? Because they took us on at scab rates without insurance cards. And he's making it a guess 60 quid a week tax-free from a padded wages list. You know it all, don't you? Most of it. Now about getting your face wrecked. I can find out. No? That's what you get for doing people favors. Including yourself. What's the difference, Make it? Why do you care? When Sam McGuire takes over what's left of this company, that's the end of the holiday. And I've never set eyes on you two. Thanks for that much. Now get lost. We're ready. Don't expect me to shed any tears about getting the sack from this job. We got most of what we wanted. You must have a crystal ball I didn't know about. Booze of gossip. Wait where the chat. I built this company, I know what it's worth. And Sam McGuire's getting it for petty cash. McGuire didn't seem to like you very much. And he knew enough to buy Quentin and a sniper's rifle to kill me and get this company. So we killed Quentin instead. I did, anyway. We did. You just pulled the trigger. Well, one thing's for sure. Somebody knew enough to turn police loose on us with good descriptions. I haven't seen Mr. Crow for months. Not since he was in the insurance business. I've never heard of this other fellow. You don't have a name on him, just a description. And a charge all wrapped up, murder. I'll keep an eye out. Both eyes. You know me, super. Or just an honest thief till I saw the light. Somebody gave me a shooter, I wouldn't know which end to hold it. You're Mr. Crow would. He's got army medals for it. Target pistol, three shots, all through the heart. You could have covered the lot with this beer mat. That's terrible, Mr. Seagram. Is there anybody we know? You should, Turtle. Name of Quentin. You were looking for where he lived. Then somebody turned his pad over, really turned it, nice and tidy. Your sort of work. Not me, Super, I'm a reformed character. Character, yes, reformed. No. I'm Sam McGuire. Charles Hammond, how do you do? I'm uh, buying Burnett Construction. At a bargain price, I hear. What it's worth. Would you care for a drink? Yes, yes, thank you, I'll have a whiskey. The uh, decline of the Burnett Empire doesn't exactly displease me, for obvious reasons. Oh, I'd heard a bit about that. Mm. Any member of this club would be delighted to give you chapter and verse, so I'll do it myself if we're to work together. Nineteen years ago, I was cuckolded by Burnett, who then took my wife away, married her, and lived happily ever after. It's one of Lou's habits, was getting what he wanted. Usually at other people's expense. So, as you can see, I should be delighted to help you in any way that I can. Uh, your, your son will be here in a minute. <laughs> Burnett's stepson, as he's come to be known. There's nothing like Lou was, he never will be. No, and that's one of life's larger mercies. One Burnett was quite enough. Hello, Father. Ah. I'm sorry I'm late, Oh, hello, Jimmy. No, but you're not. We're just reminiscing about the life and times of your late, unlamented stepfather. I'm glad I wasn't here. I like Lou. Oh, thank you. And a uh, drink for my son, please. Sherry. Ah, Mr. McGuire, the purpose of this meeting. Oh, it's simple. I need help. Persuasion. Well, good offices is a phrase that I prefer. In one direction. There's no problem with the merchant bank. I mean, they're keen. And desperate, more like, to unload their 40%. While well, it still has some value. And the Tony share? I'll sell. And Mr. McGuire already has my letter of intent. Marginal, 10% of lose 60. Well, then, what's the snag? Oh, I see Laura. That's right. 
Burnett's daughter. She still has a controlling interest, just... I did ask her to write to you. Oh, she did. The snotty note on hand-woven paper from her expensive Swiss finishing school. She'll think about it. Two large scotches, please. Make that three. You look a right pair of paddies. It's perhaps as well. Weasel Seagram's looking for you. Seagram? Copper. The murder squad. And he's got everything on you but a signed confession. I didn't know you got big medals for using a shooter, Mr. Crow. I don't wear them anymore. What are you doing here? You. I'd have found if you. We're in a hurry. You always are. Quentin's flat, they've combed it. Of course. Once I've found it, that's what you paid me for. It's ordinary. Anybody could have lived there, anonymous. Say what you like about him. He was our strength. Papers, lists, diaries, what we told you to look for. Two or three astonishing dirty books. I lifted them. Was no point in embarrassing the female relatives that are deceased. I'll embarrass your female relatives in a minute, Turtle. Mostly a wife. But what else? This was all. A calendar. With the compliments of Burnett Construction International. Yeah, I know nothing special. Except that it was rolled up and poked inside one of these old curtain rails. Well, I'm off now, Mr. Crow. On my toes. Regretful, but swift. Not yet, John. I'm going to buy us an alibi. Him, anyway. That's not important, Lou. This may be. It can wait. Where were we on the 17th? Oh, I don't know. It'd be pricey. It's heavy stuff. Artillery and all. Where were we? Stratford Races. Right. Then a big plush feed at Hunter's Lodge. It'll cost three or four grand to do it properly. That's how it gets done properly. I want a waterproof turtle. People we met, winners, tote prices, bookies we used. You're on. I must say it's nice to see somebody else worry about Mr. Crow besides me. I may adopt him so I can disown him later. On your way, turtle, and make it stick. Yeah, if I do much more work for you two, you'll have to set me up in a pension fund. No, it's just a calendar, Lou. Figures underlined, date circle. Doesn't mean a thing. Move, Lou, the back. Too late. <clears throat> Do you need a letter from the Pope to get a drink in here? Huh? Well, don't take any notice of him. It's not closing time yet. When and don't be obtrusive. You're improving. When I first met you, you would have hit him. Somebody's pushing the police. Somebody's starting to panic. We need to crack this. I told you we were getting close. I hope so, Crow. This is Max Gunther. I am recording, as requested, my reactions to your somewhat unusual proposition. First, price. Unacceptable. I shall require twice the amount. I am, after all, in a unique position. Second, knowledge of my predecessor in your employment, John Quinton. He was too limited in his methods. Inevitably, he would lose against a professional such as Alan Crow. Third, capability. I am confident that the job you have in mind can be carried out quickly, given the great opportunities available to me. I shall telephone from London. Sir Charles, I'm not a diplomat. I never have been. So why didn't you tell me you were onto 1% of this transaction? Well, it's quite reasonable, I guess, Hattersfield. And fix with the merchant bank before you talk to me. Well, it's the usual confidential aspect of commercial practice. Don't jargon me. You're not a businessman. You're a not very good gentleman farmer. You won't even take on a professional farm bailiff. All you've got is family pull. And how confidential is it that you turned in your son's share of Burnett Construction as security for a big bank loan? The day after the inquest on Lou? It was a personal matter. And he is my son. The money was badly needed, and it still is. Noblesse oblige. Don't let the barns fall down. Not after seven generations, Maguire. It's lucky for you that Lou died when he did. Otherwise, you might have had the other sort of bailiffs in. Could be said that the timing was fortunate for you, too. It's no secret. Lou had something I wanted to take off him. Had done for years. Well, then there's no reason for dissension. Let me offer you a drink. How much do you really know about what's going on? How much do you? Why here? Why not the lodgings turtle farm? I told you, when in doubt, be obtrusive. 
Give the police this address, you buy yourself an automatic yes, sir. Like this? I told the manager we were wandering folk singers. Bag clothes up their own. I may even pick up a mouth organ. I swung a shovel for two weeks. Finally turned my wits loose. We're down to one motive I understand, profit and loss. And this. Let's make a list. Easy. Your stepson. Tony? Yeah. It's too soft. Boy in a man's job. Anyway, there's not enough money involved. What about his father? You pinched his wife. Sir Charles, ex-career diplomat. Get the right school tie on straight, never smell a sweat. He wouldn't have waited 19 years. But why? That's my bet. I slammed him for a long time. Now he can laugh. While he pays four million for a company worth eight. And that's the lot? Yeah. No, Lou, there's one missing. Your daughter. Wits, Lou, not feelings. You taught me. Go on. Your daughter's been a very rich young lady now for about six months. How do we check up on her? Max Gunter. Professional bodyguard. On a quiet retainer to the finishing school she's at. And money from me for overtime. You don't turn your daughter loose, even in Switzerland, without some insurance. I didn't fancy getting one of her ears through the post. Gunter. He's big. Blonde. Looks like a ski instructor. But not synthetic. Versatile. Knife, pistol. Near enough black belt with his hands. And greedy. Excuse me, Miss Burnett. Thank you, Max. Laura, finishing school is one thing, but delusions of grandeur are another. You don't need a paid bodyguard in England. I might need some work doing. And he's left his gun at home. Funny about clouds. I keep seeing the shape of people's faces. I keep seeing Lou's. And what's in that package that Max keeps hanging on to? Money. 20,000 pounds. He thinks it's school reports. I tore those up. Laura, that makes 40,000 pounds you've taken out in the six months since Lou died. Old Prendergast keeps on to me about it's it. It's my money. He's just there to count it. Well, there won't be much left to count if you keep on like this. And Maguire goes over the figures twice a week. You've told me Maguire's offer for Lou's business. Well, that's what they told you to tell me. Well, at the price he's offering, I think the man's an incompetent thief. Not the way the business is now, believe me. Look, let's get out of it. Forget it. Tony, you're five years older than me. Never did me much good. And if the school bully picked on you, you take a good hiding a week for months and never complain. Simon Buckle. Then one day I'd meet you and wait until Simon Buckle wasn't watching and kick him in the family jewels. Laura, really? <laughs> Sorry, finishing school language. But it did stop the good hidings. <laughs> yes, I remember. And Maguire didn't send me. And I'm glad to see you again. Pacing. On second thoughts, crew, I will have that drink. Make it very large. I've cracked this. The B in Burnett construction, circled. Then the letters and the months. Then the telex number, underlined six times. Yes, I've got ice strain too. The letters are the initials of the people Quentin killed. The B is me, the N in January, Brian Nelson, the P in April, Michael Preston. And the A in March for my Jane Ashley. 
The telex number, 5010. Every underlining is a payment to Quentin. Fine. It's an ingenious piece of bookkeeping, but Quentin's dead. And what about these dates, just circled anywhere? How many? Seven. And not just anywhere. They read downwards. The seven digits of a London telephone number. The number Quentin rang to contact his boss for instructions. It's the number you're going to ring, Crow. You're going to ring it like Quentin did, exactly. You're going to ring it and offer to kill me for money. That telephone is a direct line. And perhaps a nosy operator. I'm happy with call boxes. When you can find one that'll take your money. Well, the number works. It's a private answering service. You record a message. I told it I was for sale. I asked for twenty-five thousand pounds and guaranteed to deliver you as a corpse. I said I'd keep ringing for the reply. The whole of the meeting here shows a certain lack of taste on someone's part. This photograph was taken the day your mother left me. Coming here was Laura's idea. I thought the flap was closed after the left eye. She opened it. She's redoing the rest, but this is going to stay the way it was when Lou operated from here. Well, that was an abscess. Whoever killed him did the world a favour. He was killed in an accident. Prearranged either by natural justice or divine intervention. Punctuality never was one of your half-sister's virtues. She arranged to collect McGuire, look at some papers. No need to look. All she's got to do is to sign. <laughs> you know, I'll be glad when this business is over. Then you can leave this bricklaying and farm like a gentleman. Once the estate starts to show a profit. Oh, but it will now. We might even persuade Laura to take some sort of financial interest. She'll be wealthy and she dislikes idleness. That is wasting it, what is time. Mr. McGuire, I will not be ranted at. All I've been shown are figures, estimates, surveys. Nobody here has bothered to see what the jobs are worth. Looked at contracts, chased escalation clauses, talked to site managers. Well, I'm quite satisfied with the figures, Laura. <laughs> More than satisfied. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Goodness, you look well. More distinguished by the year. Oh. But you don't know anything about the construction business. Well, nor do you. I grew up with it, Mr. Maguire. Argued with my father about it. Argued is right. You once said that you'd set up in competition and break it. I meant it. You still won't put the price up. How do you know? Till I've tried. And if I decide to sell. I've been to a lot of trouble already. I'll go to a lot more to see that I'm not cheated. That's it. Uncomfortable. Tape recorders don't trace calls. Countdown. Where? Oh, I can find it. It's a block of service flats. Anonymous, like Quentin's place. There'll be an envelope with a key and a room number waiting for me. Eight o'clock. Money in advance. More instruction. Won't be there. Not we, Lou. Just me. Oh, no. Now, stay out of this, Lou. This has to be solo. It's a logical stakeout. They've seen us work. They'll expect me to go in with you behind me. It's you they'll be waiting for. And what if they reverse it and nail you first? Chance I take. Same chance you took up against the sniper's rifle when you bought me the two seconds I needed to kill Quentin. I was annoyed. I still am. Now, look, Lou. I'm an ex-mercenary. I use this for money. If I go in there, I'll stand a 50-50 chance they'll believe me. You stand none at all. Right? You've got plenty of time. Yeah. And a few things to do. 
I do. Thanks. For what? The education. It isn't finished. Listen, Crow. You're holding one card, the ace, me. If they get you in a rear corner, and you have to, kill me. Do it, I'm telling you. Kill me. Then go to work. That's about all I can tell you. I know the job's a bit behind, but the weather's been rough and we're short of labour. Not from the wage sheets I've just seen, we're not. And why aren't we pouring concrete? The ready mix people let us down. Well, Maguire squared the dispatcher to divert loads to one of his jobs. Look, I can get on to Metro. They're reliable. That hopper will be full by tonight. Doing Hennessy's job for him. You're not satisfied with much, are you? No, Hennessy, I'm not. The job's behind. It's sloppy. There's no safety rig, and I think you're fiddling wage sheets. As a site manager, I wouldn't put you onto building chicken houses. It's all in the bloody eye of the rich girl thinks she can run creation like her father did. You know what would happen if any man called me thief? Not some little piece of skirt? I thought about that, too. Max! Brayton, he said it's going to be a pleasure. If I thought about it, Laura, I could get frightened of you. Don't think about it. Just give Hennessy his cards and order the concrete. Have a large scotch, please. Turning into a right trapeze artist, Mr. Crone. Just like your steam runner, mate. Anybody recognize you in that gear? You'd better do a fast memory job on this. Alibi. Five people. All dead respectable. One's even a security geezer. How? Ah. Told him it was political. Bit of a wink and the old patriotic cloak and dagger. The money helped. God save the Queen's all right, but use five as a louder. You need these. That's a race card, bookies tickets, hotel bills. Don't flash these unless you have to. Let the coppers find them. That's what I paid for. Hmm. It's not much change from your mate's three grand. Keep it, Turtle, and thanks. It's not like the old days, Mr. Crow. All this organized crime. Nowadays, there's more organization and crime. Better for your rheumatism. Here. What's this for? Names and addresses. I want them searched in that order. McGuire, Sir Charles Allen. Laura Burnett? Mm-hmm. When? Now. You're looking for a telephone with that number. It's probably hidden, hooked up to a tape recorder. Lift the tapes, tell me the address. If you don't see me, find Lou Burnett, tell him. What do you mean, if I don't see you? Insurance. Might get run over by a bus. I don't know. Well, I suggest you give Laura another week. Well, she'll soon get tired of this particular brand for showing off. No, she's too much like Lou. Well, you know Lou when he wants something. Uh, yes, Maguire, I knew. But I don't think Laura wants a construction business. Well, I think she does. Why? As a memorial to her father? No. All right, for herself. And you heard Prendergast. In the last six months, she's taken 40,000 pounds out of the company. Well, it's her money. Some of it, anyway. Well, do you get any of it? None of your business. All right, what do I do after a week? Your sums. You already have Tony's agreement. All that only leaves Elizabeth Hayden and two or three minor shareholders allocated out of rather uncharacteristic sentiment. I'll double the price to them and they'll sell. Nobody like Burnett enough not to. That gives you 15%. Plus the Merchant Bank's 40 majority. We call a board meeting and have Laura dismiss the board for both incompetence and high-handedness. And she'll sell for whatever price she can get. Sit down, Mr. Crow. You see the chair? That's better. You want to kill Lou Burnett? I want your reasons. We might have some in common. 
It's nothing as complicated as that. I'm for sale. It's my trade, like Quentin. Lubinet's run out of time and money, and I'm wanted for murder. I need to move, and traveling's expensive. I can give you Lubinet for 25,000 pounds and produce the body. Strange. You've been together six months. I've heard of some of the things you've both done. There's been a dangerous sort of loyalty. It's unusual for Burnett, if not for you. I'm changing sides. I've done it before. That's all. I don't believe you. Goodbye, Mr. Crow. Alan Crow? Yes. We've been looking for you. I'll take the raincoat. The charge is murder. Yes, I have received instructions and I can find the place. But it will be, must be, in my time. I do not like working in public. And it will be when I have collected the money. Glenfiddich, isn't it? Special run. Your memory's improved. There's a file on you now, Lou. Thick and expensive. The people and places you've built and destroyed. You don't stutter anymore. Only when I put it on. It disappeared when I got you on the run. Why? Lots of reasons. I've got time. Of all the people who wanted to kill you, there was only me with the nerve to do it. Stuttering Tony, the stepson. I took on the great Lou Burnett on my own. Not on your own. You didn't know enough. You had to have help. Oh, yes, yes, I had help. Who knew you? Best in the world, Lou. My mother. Your wife? Yes, that's right. She helped me. Yes. I don't believe you. Think about it. She loved you enough to hate what you were turning into. A bully, a piece of breathing concrete, a machine. Started here. Lasting him. This isn't an estate, Hammond. It's a hobby. And you want me to guarantee a 100,000 loan to prop you up in a lifestyle that died with Prince Albert? Forget it. As you wish. Perhaps you'd like some tea. There was no need to be as rough as that, Lou. It's his house. We're his guests. 
This is a business visit, Maggie. Let's use the words. You can imagine the effort it cost him to make the approach. Especially to me. It jumped up Brickleaf. It wouldn't have hurt you to guarantee that, though. And then I'd spring with the money when he poured it down the drain? You said you could do with a tax loss. Look, Maggie, I made him a straight proposition and he turned me down. Now, let me buy into the ancestral acres, put in an efficient manager and a man of an investment worth looking at. All he wants to do is strut about as a village squire with his tenants tugging their forelocks, and I am not going to subsidize that. Tony, would you mind telling your father that we'll be leaving in a few minutes? I, I think he's just run for tea. To hell with tea. Ask your father if he's got any whiskey for the drink. The refusal would have been enough. By letter. You had to drive 200 miles to humiliate him. A man you'd already humiliated once by taking his wife. He's a bit pompous, a bit of a bore, but harmless. And my mother was fond of him. I don't believe you. She can't have wanted to kill me. No. Just to frighten you. Remind you. Try to change you, make you look at yourself. Doesn't make sense. Because you don't want it to. She was killed herself in a plane crash set up to get rid of me. I know. And three days before it, she asked you to take her to Fountain's Abbey. Uh, Maggie, I've got five contract visits and a thick planning officer to argue with. I cancelled the planning officer and two of the visits. You? I wanted half a day to come here again with you. Don't get sentimental too often. Do you remember we came here just after we married? We were staying at that pub along Walkdale. And you dragged me out of bed at six in the morning so we'd catch the light. Heavy dew, feet soaking wet in the grass. And you leaned back and looked up at these mummies. And you marvelled. Stone on stone, generations of craftsmen, hundreds of years dead. To the glory of God, men who built things. No slide rules or power tools, just joy and skill. The way you used to be. What do you mean, used to be? You've seen the jobs in hand. It's impressive. Just a list of contracts now. I remember you in the church at Dunstan. A hundred miles day tour, just so you could touch the wood of the screen with your hands. Tewkesbury, the townsfolk's window. Ely, a piece of wrought iron in a Dale's cottage. Well, there wasn't so much to do then. Oh, yes, there was. Just different reasons for doing it. You took time off to make Laura's cradle. Now you subcontract it and still ask for half a dozen tenders. All right. All right, Mike. But I still build things. No, you don't do. Not really. And not like this. You're building one thing. An empire. And anything that gets in the way gets flattened. Your words. Kiss me again. So let me tell you about the plane crash that killed her. We both arranged it. It was supposed to be a forced landing. To slow you down. Make you think about who you were. Mortal. She never trusted it. 
And she was right. I'd arranged for her to be driven to the airfield and arrive late. You never waited for anybody. Not even her. She took her own car instead and caught the plane. That makes it suicide. No, not Maggie. Yes, Lou. After Fountain's Abbey, she'd given up any hope of change. And she loved you too much to watch anymore. You killed her. We killed her. Both of us. And after that, you didn't stand a chance of staying alive. Do you still want to stay alive, Lou? You could take the same route as my mother if I leave you any choice, that is. You're not making the decisions anymore. Oh, yes, Lou, the big one still. I made it years ago. Somebody had to stop you, me. I watched as well. Took the arrogant patronage and the speech therapy and the office boy jobs. Saw my father grovel, buried my mother, and looked at you using the world as a doormat to wipe your feet on, and it all came so naturally to you. The price of success. And you didn't even know you were paying it. But I did. So I killed you. Not yet. Oh, yes. Bit by bit. And what about my daughter? What about her? I've told you all I know, Miss Manette. Just a man on the phone who said he had a message from your father. Let's get on. His last message, and your last order to me, rich bitch. Whiter than white, Mr. Crow. Everything checks. Must have been a good day at Stratford Races. Memorable, even. They usually are. Do I get an apology? Does a book? Quote, we're extremely sorry, sir. But you do realize we must act on all information received. We'll hang on to that. It's brand new and never been fired. And licensed. I'm an accredited member of a target club. I bet you are. I'm not really satisfied, Mr. Crow. But then I never am. Nature of my business. Don't let me see you in here again. Save the heavy stuff for shoplifter, Seagram. I'll walk in and out when I like. Who was this Quentin fellow, anyway? A tourist. I asked you, what about Laura? She always stood up to you. It was me who was the family midget. And my father. Classical. Laura's drawn 40,000 pounds out of the firm since you died, Lou. What for? Lend some of it to me. Killing's expensive. Did she know what it was for? She's your daughter. She's bright. What do you think? And how much cause did she have to love you? Not much. Like a lot of people, Lou. Now a lot of them dead. Brian Nelson. Then your helicopter pilot. Then Dieter. McKinnon. Jane Ashley. Are you worth that much blood, Lou? I was to you. Difference was I did any of the dirty work myself. I used these. Not a telephone. Not hired murderers like Quentin. When you were small, you used to hide in cupboards if you thought there was going to be any trouble. Laura used to have to go and find you. Now, I've done a lot of things wrong. But I was always there in the open if there was trouble. Nobody ever had to go and find me. You're still hiding in cupboards, Tony. I'm out now, Lou. You'll see. 
third address on the list you gave me, Mr. Crow. It's just like getting into a baby's crib. Somebody ought to tell him about okay. it. Only one. I lifted it. There was some very dodgy wiring, Mr. Crow. Very dodgy. You should have warned me about that. I'll drew it for you. Tape turtle and a recorder. That's fixed. Big ears? Be careful with that. Of course. My own collection of tapes extends to more than 3,000. Some of them quite old. I can push buttons. Well, there's no need for that. You know you can rely on my absolute discretion. About as far as you could throw King Kong. Shift. He's not really deaf, you know. Just likes to listen. Goes to pictures on his own a lot, sits Play on the, the paper. <laughs> girl will disappear. This is how. There is now a full hopper of concrete on the bridge job you visited yesterday at Islam. It operates from the black lever on the side. There is no site manager and the contract will be unwatched. Drop the girl in and pour concrete. Check the hopper control first, then be sure to switch off. I don't like the sound of him much. Wheels. Outside. I'll be back in two hours. I'll need a gun. I'll be fair, Mr. Crow, at this time of night. Try boots. Just get it and be here. <laughs> Any minute, a man could walk through that door and kill you. Max Gunther. Doesn't it bother you? Not much. You'll be dead before then. If I don't kill you, Crow will. If and when they let him out of prison. What did you buy Crow with, Lou? The knowledge, he said, a choice of directions. He could be me, he said, in 15 years' time. Then he's better off in prison. He won't be in prison. Out of all the people in the world who hated you, you had to find somebody that you could depend on. I wonder what he saw. I wonder, too. Hey, Gunter! No pistol, man. I don't have one. Turned into a fool crowd. Barehanded. I can move half a dozen of you. I know you can. I've seen you do it. Make sure your black belt's fast. Fathers. Is my father alive? Depends what you mean by being alive. I didn't know my father had any friends. Did you ever see him when he was in trouble? How he operates? He ran things his way. Always and all the time. If he was ever in trouble, nobody ever knew about it. Except once. When my mother died. And then you couldn't reach him because he wouldn't let you. you. Couldn't talk to him because he wasn't listening. Except to the voices in his head. Perhaps. Or his own private rooms. Forget about no man as an island. Who was? Was. Another faulty call box. 
It'll ring again in a minute. And that's what I was waiting for. What did you used to say? The real job's over. Now the landscape artist can move in and tart it up. Cover good concrete. When that phone rings again, you answer it. I've got plenty of time. More than you have. Perhaps. If you want to use it after that telephone call. I worked this out, Lou. Step at a time, the way you taught me. Not as fast as you, not in your straight line. Worked out and destroyed. First you, then the empire you trampled on people to build. Now your daughter, buried in concrete, Max Gunther, and I did it. Me. Better use these to kill you. Nope. Your daughter's downstairs in the car. Ask her to come up. No. Why not? You know why. Oh, well. All are safely gathered in. Most of us, anyway. Perhaps a last message. That was for me to do. You wouldn't have had the time. This is what Turtle calls dodgy wiring. You're the explosives expert. Disconnect the recorder. There's 15 pounds of gel ignite in that bookcase. I've fetched your daughter up? No. She wants to know if you're dead or alive. Alive? You might not know what it means. I just know a lot more about the price of what it used to mean. To you, to me, uh, to a lot of other people. Clean slate. Could be a bonus. Use it. Well, luck. Second chance. Education. You taught me. What do I do? Revert? Pick up life for a left arm. Up to you. A choice for both of us. Racking up all the reasons. Some of them good ones. For other people who want to kill me. I met some of them, remember? There's a lot of hatred, a lot of greed, a lot of envy. Some of it was your fault. Some of it original sin you didn't invent. Still leaves a conscience with a trail of blood across it. I still only know part of the score. What else is left to crawl out of the woodwork of the man I was? Who am I now? All the time I've got is borrowed. do now. About him. I'll see to that. I didn't mean that. What are you going to do? I don't know anymore. <laughs> 